my name is Jakub Cześlak. I am from uh, Krakow, from University of Science and Technology. And would like to talk today about Mosbauer investigations of high entropy alloys. At the beginning, I will shortly introduce you or maybe remind you what does it mean high entropy alloys, then show some results of our experiments on the iron chromium cobalt nickel core with uh, some addition of aluminium. Yeah. So phase separation in this system. I will discuss uh, the results of our Musbauer measurements and discuss isomer shift and quadrupole splitting in the spectra. Of course, some conclusions. This is the, sorry, this is the guy who is responsible for high entropy alloys, Professor Yi from Taiwan University. And uh, he proposed completely new way of uh, synthesizing materials. Usually when, are, when you're using a steel, it is composed of one main component, usually iron, and big number of additions, which, can, which should modify its properties. And the new way, new thinking, is based on the uh, preparing of, ion, of alloys by uh, melting of at least five components, big number of components, in comparable proportions. Usually we are thinking that in such a case we will get very complicated phase diagram, but uh, in this case usually we are observing very simple structures, unexpectedly FCC or BCC, sometimes HCP structures. What is responsible for this fact is Gibbs free energy. In uh, this case, it is competition between uh, the enthalpy and the term connected with entropy. So you can lower the Gibbs free energy in two ways, by lowering of the enthalpy, but also by increasing of the entropy. And in the case where you have five components in comparable proportions, configuration entropy of this system uh, can be uh, calculated analytically in this way. And it is just simply uh, proportional to logarith natural logarithm of the number of constituents, and it can get very high values. So for example, for five components, you have 1.61. It is rather big value. And this term, especially in higher temperatures, can dominate the Gibbs free energy. We have uh, analyzed uh, high entropy alloys based on the core of iron, chromium, cobalt, nickel with some admixture of aluminum. And uh, it is well known when you are increasing of aluminum content the simple structure is changing. We are starting uh, from the phase which is FCC phase, and then when uh, the uh, nominal air, uh, aluminum content reaches approximately 0.5, the second phase can be seen. It is FCC phase, so in this range we are observing competition or rather coexistence of these two phases. For higher aluminum contents above one, we are observing third phase. It is again BCC phase. We are calling it gray phase. It is enriched in chromium. So in fact, we don't observe single simple structure. We have three simple structures in this case. Uh, the uh, X-ray diffractograms or neutron diffractogram in this case is, is shown here. So they are very well defined. We have several techniques of producing such alloys. We can melt them. We can sinter uh, the pure powders of pure elements and obtain quite large grains of pure uh, structures. We can analyze them further. We have also performed uh, magnetic measurements uh, on, the on the several series of samples in this range of uh, aluminum content. And we have confirmed that uh, the samples are multi-phased. Each phase has different magnetic properties, different ordering temperatures. For example, you can see it on, on, on these curves that, are, that there are several ordering temperatures present there. What is interesting is that magnetic moment of the samples first decreases up to uh, for x equal 0.5, it has the lowest value, and then it starts to increase. And we have explained this fact 
uh, in terms of multi-phase character of the samples and different magnetic properties of particular phases. Now, Mesbauer measurements. Mesbauer measurements performed at the room temperature are presented on this series. At the beginning, for low aluminum content, we have a doublet. Then something appears here, marked by blue. For last two samples, we are observing also magnetic splitting of, of the spectra. At uh, liquid nitrogen can temperature, first two samples became magnetic. Next two are still in paramagnetic state. And here we have magnetic and paramagnetic states, maybe paramagnetic and some magnetic traces. And this is fully magnetic uh, spectrum of the sample. Uh, since we have three different phases and we don't know too much more about their nature, we decided to synthesize particular phases separately to measure them, to analyze their properties, and in this way to analyze the properties of the whole sample. So we have synthesized three, I don't know why the circles are so small, but we synthesized three samples from, uh, five samples, one from this range, two samples from the dark BCC phase, and two samples for the dark gray phase, they are the compositions of them and measure them separately. The spectra are shown on this picture. So the first one, FCC, bright phase, it is, ah, the spectra are measured, all they are measured at room temperature, but the samples were annealed for 24 hours in different temperatures in 1,900 and so on. And for the FCC bright phase, we are always observing double line. So nothing has changed also, the parameters of this double line are very similar. They are marked here. Isomer shift average isomer shift is shown on this line. So nothing has changed after annealing. Uh, BCC dark phase changes a bit its nature. Uh, some magnetic splitting appears. And we are explaining that in terms of uh, spinodal decomposition in the sample. The last one, BCC gray phase, uh, transforms in uh, some temperatures into the sigma phase. For example, in these temperatures marked by red, you have completely different spectrum with different parameters corresponding to the sigma phase. This is, again, uh, magnetically splitted BCC gray phase. What, what, would, what I would like to touch today is the nature of this spectrum of FCC bright phase, because it is really FCC phase. We have verified it using uh, diffraction techniques. This is a single phase sample. And in principle, we should observe single line if it is not magnetically split. We are observing double line. What does it mean? That there is something which produces electric field gradient inside the sample. Uh, in order to explain this, we have performed uh, electronic structure calculation and we had to take into account two, times, two kinds of disorder. So chemical disorder, which is connected with the fact that we are putting various atoms on various lattice, para, uh, various lattice sites. And the second one, topological disorder, because when you are putting various atoms, you are changing the distances between nearest neighbors. So it is not directly FCC structure as, as here, and in this case, because various atoms are in different distances. Uh, we have explained, again, using these calculations, we have explained uh, magnetic properties. I'm prepared, I'm showing only one picture from, from, from this part of our investigation. Please concentrate on this one. These are average magnetic moments on chromium, iron, cobalt, and all other atoms calculated using different techniques, so with coherent potential approximation as an average structure, and calculated using only KKR approximation, where I am calculating a huge number, approximately 500 uh, of different supercells with different orderings of atoms, and calculating hyperfine parameters, hyperfine field, magnetic moment in this case, for each atom separately and analyze the results in terms of the distribution of particular values. 
And you see the average values agrees quite well between these two, but the distribution, the spam of the magnetic moments is huge. For example, in this case for chromium, you are observing minus 0.2, but it ranges from plus, plus 2 to minus 2. So such uh, change of the lattice parameters, such change of the distances between nearest neighbors and change of occupancies of nearest neighbors can produce such huge spam of particular parameters. And now let's come back to our FCC bright phase measurements. This is again the spectrum presented earlier. And this is for, co for comparison the spectrum of the pure phase with equimolar composition of four elements. They look very identical. The hyperfine parameters of them are also very similar. And for them, first we have calculated the isomer shifts and in fact distribution of the isomer shift. It is shown on this picture here. The sigma for this distribution is 0.06 millimeter per second. Now, this is the, calcul the fitted uh, isomer distribution curve fitted to this picture, to this spectrum. And you see, obviously, it is, uh, there are two peaks present in this spectrum. And when we apply two Gaussian lines into, into this measured spectrum, you will get 0.071. So it is very similar value to this one. We can say that the distribution of the isomer shift can make your line broader but it cannot explain why do we have two doublets here. So what is responsible for this doublet? Quadruple splitting. Uh, first of all, surrounding of atom, of iron atom in, in, in the lattice. Uh, two kinds of disorder means two kinds of influences, structural influence connected with different distances between nearest neighbors and chemical connected with various elements of particular sites. At the moment, I can say only that this structural one is much, much stronger. So some five, six times stronger than the chemical one. And of course, there is the second term, which see, I think it is more important in this case. So polarization of the electrons. But unfortunately, it was not included in, in this version of our calculations since we have used muffin tin type of potential and it is spherically symmetric so we don't see nothing connected with with this polarization so uh, relevant calculations are in progress uh, but we have to finish them to to fully explain why do we observe a doublet in, the, in this case so conclusions from my talk are that Mosbauer spectroscopy allows to distinguish between all present phases, especially between alpha and sigma phase, which are presented in the spectrum. The sigma phase in this system transforms only from the BCCG phase. It was also not clear from previous measurements because the sigma phase was observed experimentally and no one knew from which phase in, and in which range of temperature and which range of, of composition it appears. Uh, FC bright phase has pure FCC crystal structure. However, uh, one observes a doublet. This fact should be explained via electronic structure calculations. And the influence of structural disorder on the electric field gradient is five, sorry, is five to six times higher than the chemical one. Thank you for your attention.